My name is Rousey. Welcome back. TLT. C25 random random. Sorry for Diligent. Two copies of Molting Imp in the base deck, as well as Inferno. We've got Hellhorn Primary and Wormkin Allied. Both default. Alright, that's you know, we've got some stuff to work with here. Inferno in the base deck, eh? Been a while since I've had one of those. Unbreaker Prince. Multi multi. Um. Not certain what path I'm gonna want to go with here. Merchant of Steel with a Hellhorn next to it. There's a Herzl's and Wormkin in the second area. Divine Horde again. Next Divine Temple is in the fifth. Directly next to a Merchant of Trinkets, Herzl's Horde. Okay, so we have a really early opportunity to pick up extra trinkets. Or artifacts, as the case may be. Let's take care of our boss damage scaling. Next cards get plus three to their X value when played. We don't have any yet. These two clans don't get really good versions of that. Winged Steel. We play the third card of the turn. Draw one. It's pretty good. It's, it's, it is pretty good. We're not an Incant deck or anything like that, though. We might be slightly an Inspired deck, but I don't think that means we necessarily need to take the Winged Steel here. Trader's Quill, when we have Wormkin as one of our clans, is always particularly appealing. When a card with Consume is played, deal 30 damage to the front enemy unit. It's worth noting this does affect Seraph the Diligent because Seraph the Diligent is going to force us to be consuming our spell cards. But at the same rate, I wouldn't choose this just because of that. Heck, this is not even really a modifier on whether or not I take the Trader's Quill. That would be putting the, the cart uh, miles before the horse in another nation. Um, but I still think I can utilize it, especially with the two consume cards already in the base deck. Amplifies their damage, makes me a lot more happy about picking up certain things. Uh, we'll take the unit cost reduction here. All imps are free. There are some expensive units that are now a lot easier for us to get. Inferno already, eh? Just hoping for that later, to be entirely frank with you. I'm gonna need a slay on the Hornbreaker. Wait, no, but the enemy is sweet. No, the enemy's not sweeping. We need a slay on the Hornbreaker, so. I'm gonna play you there. Nice. We get this Laos looking for? Backline needs to die. We need to get a frontliner for you. You're dealing three damage to us no matter what, so. Throw those out there. Actually, get more damage by just using the Inferno. Yeah, uh, it looks like ultimately I still will get more damage had I used the Inferno instead. That said, I've now set up more Reap on the target, so... There we go. Now it actually works out in our favor. Gosh. That is impressive. It's good, but it's up against the Fledgling Imp, which is also quite good. Fledgling Imp that is infused, zero cost. Alright. Good damage scaling. Bog fly infused zero cost.
This is a consume card as well. Hellhorned Banner Merchant of Steel, Divine Temple. Would Bogfly go in anything? Kind of unlikely. Something go in Bogfly? Similarly unlikely. The most likely thing here is we try and find a 2 to 4 cost unit in the Hellhorn banner and then try and exploit the fact that we can play those more easily. Taking a Bounding Echoes. Speaking of a 2 to 4 cost, there are none here. Kinhos Vessel though. Sons of Kinhos Pupa. It itself has infused. The benefit it would apply to someone else is armor 10 and apply reap 1 to enemy units. I'm not really good at hatching. Can I get much better at that? Not really. Not yet at least. But I don't just want to be turning down everything, you know? I'm hesitating on this decision for a really long time because it's very important. Would I ever put its essence in someone else instead? Unlikely. Now, to give me the ability to make a unit right now, but... Not one I want. Yikes. I don't like that I turned all three of those down. I, I should have... I should have been able to use something there. I'm not feeling good about that decision. Spell chain, true stone. You. The only thing I didn't need was damage scaling. Well, this blows. <laughs> I can't make it quick because if I'm... I'm going to be putting it on the same line as the... Uh, as the other boy for a while here. I think I just plus 25 you. I think you're a stat stick for a while. God, maybe I even plus 10 you. Do I want to put a Molting Imp in a Molting Imp? 20 damage to the floor. Yeah. Spell chain for bounding echoes. No, true stone that already pierces. I mean, look, true stone could just easily go on a torch. Increasingly, I feel this is useful. Especially as I get more enemies with shards on. Spikes 3, eh? I'll be fine just because of the unit that we just picked up and double buffed. I turned down both of the Horned Warriors there because I was like... Oh, both Horned Warriors and both Branded Warriors as well. Because I was like, the damage scaling is going to come from Hornbreaker Prince. I don't, I don't need to handle that again. That is already handled. Uh, evidently, nah. <laughs> Apparently not.
can't place the shiny shield there. This isn't good. Definitely a lot better now. Still wouldn't call it good though. So they attack first, so we're losing the train steward anyway. So I might as well kill it myself and then get some buffs. Get some kill. Branded right looks pretty good right now. Yeah, we want we want some dense armor application. Speaking of dense armor application, there's another way to do that. I just need some of these. Oh, I need some extra tools to be working with. Alright. Well. We're looking for something to bail us out at this point. We're this early and still looking for a bailout. Are you kidding me? Eric's right, goad. One hell of a bailout. Now I feel a lot worse about this. Just having stat stick effects on it. Keep Rebecca's to try and scale it. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Hmm. And because it's got double upgrade, I can just strength stone, put another upgrade in it. It's got three multi-strikes, so it definitely wants it. Maybe I don't feel so bad about this. Mayhaps this won't end us. <laughs> Not happy, but that's what I get excited about, but you know, you can take what you can get. Just gonna pre-kill you just in case. Ideally, it'll be the midline that's going to get the kill anyhow. Certainly makes that a lot easier to do when we draw the branding right on exactly the right turn. Still just trying to get as many Inspire Triggers out there as possible while protecting the front lines HP as much as is possible too. Another Branding right. Beauty. Hmm. I do need damage scaling still. Dark Deal looks so good. On the Horned Warrior, I mean, what are you kidding me? You have to take that. This has multi-strike by face. For plus one capacity, this gives 30-30. God, I think I put that in the Haunt Warrior. Just 
Does that mean we go capacity? No, it means we don't go capacity. Previously, we were considering going capacity for a six unit floor uh, or six capacity floor so we can get two Keepers of Echoes on the same floor. Keepers of Echoes are going to be Chump Lock Defenders. Horned Warrior is going to be able to project its own damage. And then we have a floor that's the Demon Friend plus the Hornbreaker. Hornbreaker is not going to be the, the big scaling element in this fight that oftentimes it will be. The only reason it's not energy right now is because we already have the Forever Flame. Could it still be capacity? Such so that I can set up a mid floor. Well, my mid floor is going to want to be full size no matter. Wait, no, because we're eating the demon friend, right? We're eating the demon friend, which means the mid floor, five size, top floor, otherwise. Um. This is difficult. If I had an armor imp, this would make it easy. If I had an impish scholar, that would make it easy too. What do we have in the next area? Merchant of Steel. We do have a hell vent in the next area, but are we really going to be going to the hell vent? So we're throwing a demon friend into a horned warrior. That's just three capacity. Like, I like the idea of putting two Horned Warriors by themselves on a floor. Is that it? Am I using Keeper of Echoes? Maybe I'm not using Keeper of Echoes. Maybe Keeper of Echoes goes and starts working with the Hornbreaker. A 65 by 3, 60. Two of those on the same floor. Neither of them's quick, right? So we do have to worry about that. We're going to constantly have to find ways to defend them. We have some branding, right? Obviously shelter. Some spells to try and take out enemies faster. I don't have a descend. I don't have an ascend either. The more I look at this, the more I feel like the only wrong option is draw. No, 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 that's wrong. The only wrong option is Ember. The wrong option was capacity. Uh, this is a dupe, but it's next to a divine horde. It's not next to a d uh, divine temple. In fact, the next hell vent near a divine temple is the second last ring. So we're looking to try and get as much power out of the Merchant of Trinkets as possible. Um, which makes me think, like, maybe I don't want to go to the Merchant of Steel. Also, like, what's it going to upgrade? You know, this is fully upgraded. It's going to upgrade the, the Keeper of Echoes and it's going to look for defensive upgrades. That's what it would do. Do I need to do that right now? Kind of, actually. What would our dupe be? Dark Deal almost certainly, right? Dark Deal, yeah, definitely. Split Anvil's not bad here. Lost Luggage isn't bad here either. Lost Luggage allowing us to set up as much as possible on turn one. Spam out as many units on turn one as possible is really good. It sucks I can't take Split Amble as well. Thankfully, the most expensive spells that I have, I'm liable to just remove their costs anyway. It's got Multi-Strike. All 
I have two imps in the deck. I can't cheat its cost in any way, right? I mean, also, I was looking for something defensive so that I could put it into the Keeper of Echoes. This is not exactly what I was looking for. How do you turn down a Consumer of Crowns when you have the the Grrrt's Goad? Because I may never be able to play it? That's a pretty good reason to turn it down. Would I got to go the whole way through my deck to find the Fledgling and the Molten and play both of them to make this cost two? To then be able to play it somewhere? Where? Ouch. Slay giving rage actually wouldn't be bad on the Haunt Warrior. But the far better instantaneous stats, I think, are the ones I'm going to want to go for. Wow, that sucked to turn down. I still need the ability to infuse consistently. The only problem is, like, the spells that I'm actually using to do the infusions right now suck. Cheap dark deal, definitely. Well, if I need to leave the infusions in the deck, I guess we're definitely going for those. Multi strike, please. No. So we're looking for this Reaper, and then next level we're going to be looking for Roth. Uh, not Rothful. We'll be looking for. Uh, roll up, roll up. Found it at the end. Made it there eventually. They end with armor 15. It's extremely fine. You go to the back line so that I can go Shiny Steward behind the Fledgling Imp. So you'll overkill the Fledgling Imp and then you'll underkill Shiny Steward, uh, the Train Steward. So I'll actually get that damage through. Um, and then I'm going to have the Train Steward die afterwards. Big reasoning for that being that I need space for the Keeper of Echoes to go down. I <laughs> really don't want... It would be nice if the Demon Friend was dazed right now, actually. Uh, I think for pretty much exactly that reason, I'm actually not even going to be playing it. If it was dazed, obviously, we would still get the Slay there. Time to get as much armor out there as possible. Yeah, these are the worst scenarios, right? Where I actually have to start pinging my own stuff. That's why we need better... Um, that's why we need better infusion triggers. Hopefully we find one here. Higher Chomper. That's a tiresome climb, though. Ability to start overstacking if I really want to. Very inefficient overstacking. I don't I, I don't think we're using that that at that point. Higher Chomper gives us energy we don't really use either. Inferno clears floors that we're clearing ourselves. Higher Chomper actually lowering the cost of the... 
the prior uncastable would have been nice, but I don't think either of this, any of this comes with this, frankly. Broken memories, infuse, consume, returns a consume card to the top of the draw pile. Love it. We have to go over here. When a card with extract is played, gain an energy and a M, uh, sorry, a candy. I haven't got that, but I do want that. Plus four stacks of armor each time it's applied. I could, I could probably try and take that. In fact, I think I will take both of those and roll. Rage adds an extra damage per stack, definitely. When one or more candy are added to the floor, applying reap to a random enemy unit twice. This will be good for boss scaling. Maybe protecting some damage to the back line as well. I think I'm going to take Sin Assault though. We've got the Seraph the Diligent as the final fight, so I'm going to have things to cast in there at the absolute least, if nothing else. Intrinsic. Or oh, plus 30 magic power. So first things first, engage the pact, sack that demon into this demon. Yeah, let's make a good, powerful demon. I don't think I'm going to make anything intrinsic or, uh, yeah, or anything like that. Let's skirt away from there. What now am I looking for? I'm looking for upgrades here in this Merchant of Steel for the survivability of the Keeper of Echoes. Hmm, can we survive six additional damage on a lot of these units? That's actually not as simple. I think so, but we might need to be a little ingenious about how we approach it. Hmm. It's still setting up on the bottom. Like hosting King kills two. Don't have to use the Inferno. I like that. Because then we have the opportunity to actually throw out the branding right on my own character. Hosting Kin is actually pretty good here too. Bring that back. Um, there you go. Okay. So now we can get the Keeper of Echoes out. As long as we kill the back line, which we will. This isn't going to get much. As in, the Keeper of Echoes is not going to survive for long. It's okay, I didn't expect it to survive forever. Honestly, I didn't really expect it to survive much at all. Got enough buffs out there that I'm pretty comfy with it, though. That amount of damage being sustained by the Horned Warrior right now is, uh, what's the opposite of ideal? Is it's that.
Enemy has lifesteal out on the board. Which means they just sweep and kill the next line too. <sighs> well, at least I get some damage out on the board now. It's too many losses. It's too many losses. I'm better than this. What's happening? I'll tell you one of the things that is happening is... is So back when I started playing Monster Train for the first time, I worked out a kind of... Uh, a, a kind of... Not spreadsheet, but checklist, effectively, right? Like, how do I deal with two big dudes? How do I deal with sweep? How do I deal with crystal cloak? How do I deal with spikes? How do I get scaling attack? How do I get scaling defense? How am I going to be handling, you know, relentless phases? How am I going to be handling individual wave phases? How can I sweep enemies? Those kinds of things. Not necessarily sweep, right? How do I project damage? Is how I would refer to that instead. But I don't think... Well, I, I know I didn't, right? I didn't reassess them for the last divinity, except for the last divinity boss fight. I didn't reassess them specifically for shard enhanced enemies. But was there any world where 16 sweep wasn't gonna kill us? Maybe I take too many upgrades. Like, I'm trying to get something together really early on, right? And then trying to exploit that and refine that from then on. You know, engine building. And and my initial read of this update was that it would lean more towards my playstyle, right? I even said that in the patch notes review. But when I'm trying to do my early engine building here, I'm... I'm dying. Whether it's a boss that does like eight by seven up to nine by seven, ten by seven, sorry, with the uh the sigment death, or whether it's your know, sixteen sweep. Or whether it's you know the your relentless gain five uh sorry, uh Resolve, gain 5 damage, multi-strike 2, regen 35. I'm running into dead stops against bosses. And specifically shard enhanced bosses and shard enhanced enemies. So I need to work out a new set of criteria that I need to be able to survive. For each floor as well, which is the part that's more uncomfortable about it, right? Because like Sorrow of Sorrows we lost to here uh anything without sweep we probably would have won of course we knew it was sorrow uh sorrow of sorrows but we only knew it was sorrow of sorrows coming into this fight that's something that's something there the the fact that the shard enhanced takes these bosses and makes them dead stops against certain decks like previously most of your management was uh it, it was agnostic of the boss right uh there were a few bosses that weren't that circumstance right so if you had many small instances of damage the living wall was not that for you if you didn't have much scaling defense or you didn't have many chump blockers the crystal cloak obviously wasn't that for you right and the crystal cloak looms large in many people's mind for that specific reason right it is a boss that is a dead stop right you'll even hear earlier in my plans as i was trying to say how do you account for this how do you account for this how do you account for this the only boss that i said how do you account for in my initial kind of like uh layout of of the kinds of things you need to be able to count for in a standard run the only boss in there was crystal cloak because it's a very unique kind of thing right and it's, it's quite powerful right 
But the problem I'm now experiencing is that with Shard Enhancement, many, many more bosses in the game become that. Let me clarify my, uh, clarify my thought for a second here. I appreciate it, by the way, if you've if you've stuck around despite knowing that there's a loss on the screen. To to hear this, I don't usually like litigating my thoughts for like the first time out loud. But I've this is this has been growing for a while. This is also not. Please don't take this as specifically a complaint about the game, right? This is how do I need to approach it to change my performance in it so far? Because it, it's just, it's not been great. I've I've won a fair few, sure, and I you know was streaking on stream, but but I need to be able to make that more consistent. Throwing away every two out of three runs is is not not maintainable. Uh. Okay. I yeah. So if more of the bosses are now hard blocks with that and you need to account for all of those then the mental overhead has grown significantly. I think I know what the solution is. So they tell you what the Ring 3, Ring 6, and final bosses are, right? And they tell you those largely because you are supposed to be able to counterplay. But with the Shard Enhancement System, those aren't the dead stops. I'm not I'm not dying to Daedalus or Arcus or Seraph. I'm dying to the Sower of Sorrow. I'm dying to the, the self-made Harpy. I'm dying to... Well, not Crystal Cloak, because oftentimes I have some sort of a plan for Crystal Cloak. As I mentioned prior. I think they need to show you the boss on every floor. They haven't been doing that so far. And it, it, it had been fine, right? Because Crystal Cloak was the one that you needed to account for consistently. But if you need to be able to account for in a run where you are picking up pack shards every single different sharded boss on every single floor because some of them will just dead stop you that's not great i know there are a fair few people who watch me who are um quite quite into monster train themselves quite quite adept at monster train themselves in particular i'm thinking of people like you know amford sal <sighs> I'd, I'd love to get y'all's take on this actually I'd, I'd love to have a conversation in the comments yeah I, I don't usually like oh comment below let's let's farm some interaction here on youtube i'd love to have a conversation about this whether or not it's in the comments or in the discord discord's linked in the description down below um, the water cooler would probably be the, the right room to have that discussion. Or even the monster train room. Yeah. I... Justice Tom as well. I, 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 I don't mean to leave any names off of the list. Sorry, I'm just a bit bamboozled here. I wonder if that is a correct identification of a problem and the solution, or... If, and look, this this totally, totally happens. Or if I just feel a bit hard done by by a couple of my runs, I wasn't paying enough attention, and therefore, it, like, it, therefore I'm trying to ascribe a problem with a solution. I feel like I'm taking enough responsibility for my own contributions to this, but... But then again, I would feel that, right? Anyway. Give you two copies of Dark Deal so you kill me faster. My name is in Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train The Last Divinity. The last 10 minutes there were a, uh, a, a broader conversation about it. I appreciate it uh, if you stuck around. For those of you who did, for the moment, though, there's a playlist in the description down below with all my content, the game past, present, and future, and hopefully we will see you next time.